okay so in today's class we will continue with stream ciphers so yesterday you have seen some exam small examples to understand that stream i mean uh, the problem was i was interested in reconstructing the stream cipher that is given the sequence can i again reconstruct the corresponding lfsr okay so the so to in today's class we will essentially talk about two topics we will discuss about linear complexity i think i started with this and i will continue with this and mainly we will concentrate on this algorithm that is called balekam assay algorithm which is used to solve this problem okay it's a very phenomenal and seminal paper so we will discuss on this huh? and it's quite important so I, i i hope you understand why we are studying this because suppose consider a very simple stream cipher what you do is that you essentially have got a key stream k for example okay and what you are doing is suppose consider that you are just taking mi and obtaining the corresponding cipher text ci right so you know that in context to models like for example cho chosen plain text or non plain text models where you know the corresponding value of mi and you know the corresponding value of ci you know the value of k right but the point is that given this value of k can you also know the corresponding initial secret key with which it started so this is the key stream right not the actual key so there is an internal algorithm here and there is an input secret key which is being provided as an input right so there is a secret k or key which is which is the actual secret of the cipher okay so therefore the observer is essentially observing at this point and from there he is interested in constructing the lfsr and also the key so we are considering a single lfsr system okay and trying to understand that whether a single lfsr system which has actually got nice pseudo random properties can actually be reconstructed okay so balekam massey algorithm uh, so so if you if you remember the problem that is uh, i can essentially decompose or rather write all these key point key bits as linear combinations of the internal secrets right and how many secret values are there there for an n length lfsr there are actually 2n secrets because you do not, not do not know the initial seed okay that gives you n bits you also do not know the con corresponding connection polynomial okay and another thing which you do not know is the length of the lfsr right so therefore you will find that you can actually write them as a system of linear equations and you can solve them hmm? but this is an unwieldy process okay and balekam massey algorithm gives a very simple and elegant technique in order to solve this problem okay so we'll uh, with this motivation we'll study this problem and uh, so first of all this is a recap of at the lfsr structure so you see that you have got sj minus 1 to sj minus l okay so please pay attention because there are certain amount of formalisms required to understand the basic principle of the algorithm okay so there is some amount of involved mathematics so therefore sj minus 1 sj minus 2 to sj minus l plus 1 and sj minus l so how many lengths are how many flops are there uh, there are l l flip flops right or l storage elements so the corresponding feedback sj you get as a linear combination of these points but thing is that whether you are taking the feedback or not that depends upon a control bit okay so there are also l control bits here so you see that you take this and you multiply with this corresponding feedback and you exhort that with the previous things right so this is a very simple structure of the lfsr so the lfsr was said to generate a finite sequence say s0 s1 to sn minus 1 when this sequence coincides with the first n output digits of the lfsr okay so then we say that the sequence is being generated by the corresponding lfsr okay now you note that if l is greater than equal to n that is if the length is quite larger compared to the length or the, the sequence that you want to generate then generating is trivial right you can just simply stream in the data and you can obtain the corresponding output but the problem becomes when l is smaller than n that is the sequence is a larger sequence right so we will be concentrating on this part of the problem that is when l is smaller than n so it follows that the lfsr generate the sequence if and only if this is true okay so why have we started from j equal to l so you know that what to read out this particular equation it says that sj is equal to the sigma of ci multiplied with sj minus i okay and your j starts from l why 
Now, because before that you have just streamed in the data, right? So therefore, that is, I mean, the feedback effect doesn't come for the previous before 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 this j equal to l point, right? So the problem starts when only when j is equal to l, and after that this has to be a linear combination of the previous l values. Okay, so this is a very important equation which we have to keep in mind that is s j is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to l c i s of j minus i. So, simply to remember it is just the coefficients multiplied with the previous l states of the l values of the LFSR. Okay. So, first of all let us consider this theorem. It says that if some LFSR of length l generates the sequence s 0 to s n minus 1, but not the sequence s 0 to s n minus 1 and s n. So, I have added one more value to this sequence. Then any, any LFSR that generates the latter sequence if it has got length of l dash, then you can actually prove that l dash is greater than equal to n plus 1 minus l. Okay? So, if you remember the previous simple previous last day we were doing a simple example right? where we saw that till some point you are easily able to construct the LFSR. Okay? But the point uh, uh, starts when you are going beyond that. Okay? See, for example, if I start with a 0, if you remember the previous day's example, we started with 0, 0, right. So, 0, 0 you can do with a 0 length LFSR, okay. So, when you are doing from 0, 0, 1, then immediately your length jumps to 3, right. So, then you require a 3 stage LFSR, okay. So, this is exactly the same thing. It says that, uh, so this was a trivial example where you see that in this case, uh, in the particular example that I am talking about, your value of n is actually equal to n plus 1 is actually equal to 3 because n was equal to 2 and l was equal to 0. Okay? So, actually although I have said you that l dash is greater than equal to n plus 1 minus l, so, so therefore, we uh, so, okay, first of all let us try to prove this result that is l dash is greater than equal to n n plus 1 minus l. Okay. So, in order to prove that you observe one, th one thing from this theorem statement itself that is n minus l plus 1. right? So, you can write this as n minus l plus 1. So, what happens when n is smaller than l? This is actually trivially true. right? The length has to be greater than equal to 0. Okay. But the problem we will be essentially therefore, considering when n is actually greater than equal to L. Okay, so when n is greater than equal to L, that is the interesting problem. Okay, so let us in in that case, first of all, we will start with contradiction. So let us contradict this statement. So if I contradict this statement, that means L dash greater than equal to n plus one minus L, I am contradicting. So therefore, what I am assuming that L dash let L dash be less than n plus one minus L. So therefore, L dash is less than equal to n minus L. Okay. So, I can write this as L dash is less than equal to n minus L. Okay. So, this is by contradiction. We have just contradicted the statement of the theorem. Okay. And what we will see that is that if this is true, then we end up with something which is wrong. That is we are violating the initial starting point. Okay. So, what are the starting points? Let us see this. So, this is what I have said, already, said to you already that is the case 1 that is L greater than equal to N the theorem is trivially true. For case 2, so let us consider two, trivia, two LFSRs. Okay. So, the two LFSRs has got uh, say for example, C 1 to C L and C 1 dash to C L dash. Okay. So, these are the corresponding coefficients of the two LFSRs. Okay. So, you note that we have assumed that L dash is less than equal to n minus L. Okay. That is by contradicting the theorem statement. Okay. So, now this is clear that is this corresponding polynomial LFSR, the first LFSR has generated the sequence till n minus 1. Right. So, therefore, I can write this equality, but this is not equal to S n. Why? Because it is not generating the the corresponding SN, uh, the SN value, right. 
that is the n plus 1th value in the sequence. Okay. So, but this LFSR is generating all the values. So, therefore, you start from L dash and continue till n, this equality holds. Right. So, therefore, these two equations are clear to us. Right. This is a simple statement of where we started with. Right. That is the initial theorem statement basically. So, this LFSR is generating till n minus 1 values, but this one is generating, generating till the nth point. Okay, then is nth value, but this one is not generating the nth value, so therefore this inequality. Okay, is it okay? Yes. Okay, so now let us start considering this particular value. Okay, so you see that what we will do essentially is this: that is, you start with the first LFSR coefficients, that is, consider sigma c i s n minus i. Okay, so, therefore, what I am doing is that I am calculating this particular value when j is equal to n. Okay, so, I am trying to evaluate this and I will show that if this is true okay, and if this is true, then this is actually equal to Sn. Okay, so, therefore, that contradicts my initial starting point. Right? Do you understand the idea? So, therefore, so we will we'll try to prove this. Okay? So, how do I start to prove this? You can see that sigma, if I just write sigma i, uh, I mean if I just write sigma i equal to 1 to l c i s n minus i, okay? then we can actually substitute this value. Okay? So, that is what we do. So, why, why can we substitute this value? Do you understand this? Because in order to substitute, you note one thing that this has to lie in the ra range of j, because otherwise this definition does not hold. Right? So, therefore, you see that here you consider this particular sequence, this says the sigma i equal to 1 to l c i of s n minus i. Okay? And you note one thing that from I mean what, what are the two extreme ends of this sequence, uh, sequence in that case in this corresponding sigma value? It starts with S n minus 1 and continues till S n minus L. Right? And what we have assumed is that n minus L, if you come here, S n minus L is actually greater than equal to L dash. Right? N minus L is actually greater than equal to L dash. Right? So, therefore, if that is so, then this particular sequence that is S n minus 1 to S n minus L is actually a subset of S L dash to S n minus 1. Why? Now, because L dash L dash is actually smaller than N minus L. Right? So, this is essentially a subset of this particular sequence. You see that? Yes? You see that if I consider this sequence say from S L dash to S n minus 1, then L dash because I have contradicted L dash was less than equal to n minus L. right? So, therefore, this is actually a smaller value compared to S n minus L. right? So, therefore, this is a bigger sequence compared to this. Okay? So, therefore, this is a sub part of this. So, therefore, this I mean for all the values of S n minus i where i runs from 1 to L. I can substitute the second equation. Okay? I can write them in terms of the coefficients of the second LFSR. Right? So, therefore, that is exactly what I do. I take this S n minus i and I substitute by this value. So, you see that this is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to L dash c k dash S n minus i minus k. Okay? So, therefore, this follows straight away from this equation. Right? So, you see that if I am interested in computing uh, S n minus i, okay, then I will substitute here in instead of j, I will write here n minus i. So, this becomes equal to sigma c k dash S n minus i minus k. Right? So, therefore, that is exactly you can substitute here, it becomes equal to c k dash S n minus i minus k. Right? Till this part is clear. So, now what you can do is that you can interchange these two sigma values. 
okay so you can bring this one here and bring this one here and also because of this particular fact i mean again you have got this so if you consider the next sigma it is ci sn minus i minus k okay so this i can use the previous equation that is the uh, this particular equation okay and i can again instead of this i can write sn minus k okay now note that you can again write this because of this fact that is now sn minus l dash till sn minus 1 is a subset of sl to sn minus 1 because l dash is less than equal to n minus l okay so therefore if you write this now you see that what you have essentially obtained here is nothing but equal to sn okay so therefore what you are essentially contradicting is the initial starting point that is the first LFSR, LFSR cannot generate the SN digit. Okay. So, therefore, where did we go wrong? We essentially assumed this which was wrong. Okay. So, therefore, if we th this proves the theorem that is L dash is actually not less than equal to N minus L, but it is actually greater than equal to N minus L plus 1 okay. or N plus 1 minus L. Right. Do you understand the principle? I mean, you can always uh, go back and look at the proof in details. But this is the idea. The idea is that if there is a particular LFSR which is unable to generate sequences from S0 to SN, I mean, we generate the sequence from S0 to SN minus 1, but not SN, then you need to add on to that length. Okay. So, therefore, if you add on to that length and the length becomes say L dash, and the previous length was L, then there is a definite relation between L dash and L, okay? and that is what we proved in this theorem. Okay? So, therefore, now you can actually better understand the linear complexity problem. Okay? So, what is the linear complexity problem? This is what I define, is that this is the minimum length of all the LFSRs which generates the sequence S0 to Sn minus 1. Right? So, clearly you can see that L and S will be less than equal to N. Why? Yeah. So, therefore, if, if I am considering S0 to Sn minus 1, any N bit LFSR can definitely generate it. Right? The problem is, can I obtain lesser than that? Right? So, another thing to note that moreover LNS must be monotonically decreasing, actually this will be monotonically non-decreasing. Okay? So, there is a mistake, it will be monotonically non-decreasing with increasing value of n. So, I think you, this also you understand this. Okay? So, therefore, so moreover LNS must be actually monotonically non-decreasing with increasing n. Okay? So, why it is true? Because you are also understand why it is true, because this will straight away contradict the initial hypothesis. Right? So, we will start with certain conventions. The conventions are that the all zero sequence is generated by the LFSR <coughs> whose length is zero. Okay? So, you know that we are trying to develop a recursive construction. So, there are always some initial starting points for any recursive algorithm. Right? So, these are the starting points. That is all zero sequence is generated by the LFSR whose length is L equal to zero. Okay? And if S0 to Sn minus 1 are all zero okay? and your Sn is equal to 1 then the length which is required is actually equal to n plus 1. Right? This we saw, saw for our example. Right? If you remember 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 could have been generated by a 0 length LFSR, but 0, 0, 1 was generated by a 3 stage LFSR. Right? So, therefore, this is what it says exactly. Okay? And you can actually, uh, so these are the conventions. So, we will assume these as conventions. Okay? So, now let us consider another lemma. So, lemma is this that if some LFSR of length L generates the sequence S0 to Sn minus 1, but not the sequence S0 to Sn minus 1 Sn, that is essentially you see that this Sn is not being generated, then you can actually show that the linear complexity for n plus 1 okay, for this sequence is actually greater than max of ln s or n plus 1 minus ln s. So, this is actually quite trivial. This follows from the previous idea. That is, we know that it is monotonic 
and therefore ln n n plus 1 s has to be greater than or equal to ln s we also prove this result so it has to be greater than the <coughs> maximum of these two right so therefore it is either greater than or equal to the maximum of this or maximum which, whichever is the maximum value it has to be greater than that right so ln plus 1 s has to be actually greater than or equal to maximum of ln s comma n plus 1 minus ln s okay so so this is an interesting uh, lemma which will help us to i to, to recursively compute the linear complexity okay right so you note one thing that is when do you require an updating that is you can understand that if ln s is I mean if n plus 1 minus ln s is actually greater than ln s then you require to add on to the length right and when this will happen when will this happen when n plus 1 minus ln s is greater than ln s right so therefore if I write this it will look like this right that is n plus 1 minus ln s okay is greater than ln s so that means that n plus 1 is greater than 2 ln s right so i can write this as n is greater than equal to 2 ln s right so rest of the cases updating is not required that is when l when n is less than 2 ln s then updating is actually not necessary so the length gets updated only i mean it, it can get depending upon certain cases that is if there is I will I will define something when it gets updated but whenever there is an update the update will happen only when n is actually greater than equal to 2 ln s right do you understand why because of the monotonicity again right yeah so now we are actually more or less stage to understand the balekam massey algorithm so it is a recursive algorithm which produces one of the lfsrs of length lns that is minimum length lns is the minimum length which generates a sequence which generates the sequence s0 s1 to sn-1 for any integer value of n okay so for this again I, let us uh, look back at the connection polynomial so you had c d equal to 1 plus c 1 d plus so on till c l d power l okay so this was my connection polynomial which has degree at most l in the indeterminate the indeterminate in this case is d in the variable d okay so the convention is that second there is starting convention it follows from the previous thing that is c d is equal to 1 for the lfsr of length l equal to 0 okay so if length l equal to 0 then the we will assume that cd is equal to 1 okay so this is just a convention okay so therefore for a given sequence s i will write that cnd is equal to 1 plus c1n d plus so on till c ln s n d to the power of ln s okay so this is just a rewriting of the previous connection polynomial only thing is that i have specified that the length is actually equal to ln s and all these sequences if you note carefully are actually denoted like c1 c2 and c so on till c ln s but there is also a uh, at the top i have written a suffix i mean a values to indicate that this is a generator of the sequence till s n minus 1 okay that is from s0 to sn s n minus 1 okay so therefore this lfsr essentially generates the sequence s0 s1 so on till sn minus 1 okay so what we are interested in calculating in that case cn plus 1d right so what we are we, we are interested in calculating the value of cn plus 1d because cn plus 1d will also give us the corresponding coefficients right which will generate the sequence s0 s1 to sn right so now you see that uh, i mean before going into the uh, next things we will try to understand certain things that is we will try to prove a recursive construction of this particular polynomial okay that is cnd 
and at the same time we will also show that the lemma 1 that we stated we showed we, we essentially till now have proved an inequality right that is the ln s was that is ln plus 1 s was actually greater than equal to the maximum of ln s or n plus 1 minus ln s okay so actually that greater than equal to should be replaced by an equality okay that is it will be an equality instead of a greater than equal to okay in order to prove that so we will essentially develop a proof which merges these two proofs okay so we will prove that equality by induction okay and at the same time we will give a proposal for a polynomial which will be a candidate for cn plus 1d okay so therefore this is a constructive way of proving okay this is not an existential proof but a constructive proof okay so we will not only prove the existence but we will also show you how it's constructed right so so therefore uh, in order to do that we will define something which is called a discrepancy which we have already seen why now if you remember the previous example with the simple example that we started with we were able to calculate the values till a particular point right like for example if you remember we had 0 0 1 1 right so you know that 0 0 1 can be quite trivially constructed how now you can just take 3 stage LFSR and you can just write the feedback I mean the feedback polynomial could be simply a shift register like this right so you can take 0 0 and 1 and you can stream out this value of 0 0 1 right so what is the corresponding polynomial here cd is equal to 1 plus d cube right the, but the moment you see that you consider this particular one what is the next thing that you get feedback feedback it is actually a zero right when you want a one here you are actually getting a with this particular lfsr you are getting back zero so that means there is a discrepancy okay that is the idea of discrepancy okay so what you are actually getting back and what you want and a, an xor between that two okay so here the, so the moment you see that you actually get back one and what you i mean what you get back is zero and what you want is one you know that you have to make certain modifications in this structure okay so you note that i will just do a simple modification i will introduce an xor here and take this feedback okay so in that case this lfsr will generate the sequence 0 0 1 and 1 if you remember the previous thing what we did i mean we actually solved this and found this right so you see that you get 0 0 1 that's quite trivial but the next thing is the xor between 0 and 1 so you get back 1 till this point it's fine so what is the updated polynomial now cd so if i write this in terms of my cnd this was c3d but this is c4d so what is c4d here 1 plus d plus d cube right so therefore you see that you are able to construct the corresponding polynomial but because so in, when you are doing this algorithm you will take care of the fact that there is a discrepancy at this point and accordingly modify the polynomial okay and when there is no discrepancy then there is no modification required you can just go ahead with the previous polynomial right previous construction of the lfsr Yeah, it will be uh, one zero zero. Yeah, I am I'm streaming out from this point. Yeah, so it will be zero here, zero here, and one here. But anyway, I mean the rest of the di discussion holds. Okay, so so I am getting back first zero zero and then one. Right, that's true. So therefore, so therefore you see that whenever there is a discrepancy in introduced here, then only you require to modify this polynomial. Right. So now you come to this uh, particular uh, definition of discrepancy. It says that lemma one is actually an equality, and we have seen this for the base case, but we will prove it for the for the further cases using induction. Okay? Why am, why have I said it holds for the base case? Because I have already proved you that L, that for a zero zero one sequence that was equal to exactly equal to three. Okay? Because you started with l equal to zero and then it was actually equal to n plus 1 
minus 0. So, it was actually equal to n plus 1. Okay. So, the, for the base case, the equality holds. For the rest of the cases, we will prove it by induction. So, our hypothesis would be that this holds for ln s okay, and we will try to prove this for ln plus 1 s. Okay. So, therefore, the corresponding polynomial is in this case C and D okay, and this is what is the phenomenon which is occurring when you need an update. Okay. So, when do you need an update? When this S j exhort with what you actually obtain back, this is what you want and this is what you obtain. If you take an exhort, you get 0 for all the cases still n minus 1, but for j equal to n, you get a non-zero value. So, you get a 1 here. Okay. So, this d n is called the next discrepancy. Okay, and you need an update only when d n is equal to 1. Okay. So, therefore, you see that this is the discrepancy between s n and the n plus 1 s b, uh, 1 for first bit which is generated by the minimal length LFSR which we have found to generate the first n bits of s. Okay. So, therefore, you understand the idea behind, behind discrepancy. Right. So, this is a difference that is the XOR between what you actually obtain and what you wish to obtain right so the so therefore when dn equal to 0 then the lfsr also generates the first n plus 1 bit and therefore there is nothing to be done so ln plus 1 s is equal to ln s the linear complexity remains the same cn plus 1 d also remains the same as that of cn d okay problem happens when dn is equal to 1 then you need a correction of this discrepancy right so, you note one thing that is we will I mean, so the in order to do that, we will consider the sequence length before the last change. Okay. So, therefore, let us m be the sequence length before the last length change in the minimal length register. So, therefore, uh, before this, whichever was the last change when you did for the length that is I mean, so m is a variable which is the sequence length before the last length change in the minimal length register. Therefore, therefore, last time when you change the length, okay, what was the sequence length? That value is being held by the variable m. Okay. So, you note that this is a recursive algorithm. right? So, you are keeping on updating one after the other. right? So, the, you are modifying the length sometimes, you are not modifying the length sometimes. right? So, therefore, when was the last time? So, you go back. So, therefore, suppose you are maintaining this as in the form of a table you go back and see when is the last time when you changed the value of length okay and find out that what was the corresponding sequence length right so so that is suppose m so immediately you can understand that these two things hold that is lms is less than lns right because of monotonicity okay and lm plus 1s is actually equal to lns Right, because you have updated your m value to satisfy this. Right, so this was the last change of. I mean, m is a sequence, right? But this is the length. Okay, so you have. So what I have told you is that you have changed the length. So which means that you have gone from m to m plus one. Right, so therefore, lns must be greater than lms because it was the last change. It, m is the greatest integer before the last change. Okay, I mean m is the m is the sequence actually. So LMS is the corresponding length of the LFSR, and LM plus one s must be equal to LNS, right? Because this is the length that you're talking about. So therefore, since a length change was required, okay, so you see that only at j equal to m there must be a discrepancy. But otherwise, this would have been hold, held fine, right? Therefore, the, the dis discrepancy was zero in all these cases. Okay. So therefore, since a length change was required, this LFSR, that is LMS, and uh, with the corresponding polynomial, th this will be a capital. Okay. So CMD, this could not generate the sequence from S zero to SM, right? And that is why you change the length. Right. So, what is the sequence length, length here? M plus 1. Right. So, in order to generate the M plus 1 h sequence, length sequence, you had made a change in the value of M. Right. So, therefore, this, so therefore, immediately you can understand that the corresponding discrepancy for all these values till M minus 1 was equal to 0, but when J is, was equal to M, 
the discrepancy was a non zero value okay now by induction hypothesis you can understand that ln plus 1s is equal to ln s this we have already discussed now by induction hypothesis ln s is actually equal to max of lms and m plus 1 minus L, lms okay so you can apply this okay and you note that lms is actually less than lns and therefore i mean I mean rather this is no I mean this Q is something which is generated by this software. So, this is actually a since okay. So, since LMS is less than LNS. So, therefore, LNS is actually equal to M plus 1 minus LMS okay. So, LNS is actually M plus 1 minus LMS okay. So, now Please uh, remember this value till this point that is LNS was equal to M plus 1 minus LMS. Okay. So, after this we will give you a proposal for the next candidate that is we, till now we have assumed that we know C n d and we would like to find out C n plus 1 d which generates a sequence till S n right till S n. Okay. So, so, this is the corresponding construction the claim is that if you exhort C n d with C m d which is multiplied by d to the power of n minus m, okay, this is the valid next choice for C n plus 1 d. So, you see that you have taken this and exhort with this. Okay. So, you see that the idea of this exhorting is to correct the corresponding discrepancy value. Okay. So, uh, so, at the point of your problem this gives you a discrepancy, this also gives you a discrepancy and both these discrepancies actually cancel each other. Okay, that is the idea, but let us little bit understand more closely to understand this phenomenon. So, you note one thing that what is the degree of C d? The degree of C d would be the maximum of this degree. So, what is the degree of this L n s and what is the degree of this L m s, but n minus m is multiplied. So, it is n minus m plus L m s. Right? So, no, note that n minus m plus L m s can be actually written equal to n plus 1 minus L n s. Why? Now, because of the previous equality that we found out that L n s, if you remember the previous equality, L n s was equal to m plus 1 minus L m s. So, if you substitute this value here, you, ob you obtain this. Okay. So, therefore, C d is actually an allowable connection polynomial because you see that your maximum length is inside this. Okay. So, you see that now only one thing remains to prove that C D does the correction. Okay? Because if C D does the correction, then what you have proved is that the, that the length that is that is the next length is actually equal to maximum of L n s and n plus 1 minus L n s. So, you have proved that L n plus 1 s is actually equal to maximum of L n s comma n plus 1 minus L n s and therefore, the induction gets proved. Okay? We get the proof by induction. But till now, we have actually not proved one thing that C D actually does the correction. Okay. So, therefore, what we now need to prove is that C D does the correction, which means it generates the sequence digit S n okay. and at the same time does not disturb the previous sequences. Right? So, in order to understand this, let us uh, observe the value of C n D. Okay. So, what, has, what was C n d equal to? It was equal to 1 exhort with C 1 n d, okay, this is a small c plus so on till C l n s n d to the power of l n s. Okay. And what was C m d equal to? 1 plus C 1 dash okay, or you can just write 1 plus C 1 m, okay, 1 plus C 1 m d plus till C L m s m d to the power of L m s. Okay. So, now if you multiply this with d power of n minus m C m d, then what do you obtain? you just multiply this right so therefore it is d to the power of n minus m plus c1 m what what does this d become n minus m plus 1 
plus C L M S M d to the power of L M S plus N minus M, right. So, you note this equation and you note this equation, okay. So, your C D is an XOR between these two polynomials, right. So, C D was my by my definition C D was C N D XOR with d to the power of n minus m c of m d right. So, now I can write the, I mean I can enumerate all the corresponding coefficients for c d in terms of these two coefficients right. So, how can I write I mean the coefficients will be correspondingly c 1 will be equal to c 1 n okay, and so on till c n minus m. So, C n minus m will be C n minus m n exod with 1, because you will have the correspondingly this particular term will give you a, give you a coefficient of 1, right and so on. I mean you can write C n minus m plus 1, this will be equal to C n minus m plus 1 n exod with C 1 m, right. So, subsequently you will have till this particular point again I mean so therefore you understand that after a point there will be an XOR right. So, now you note that if I need to find out the corresponding uh, discrepancy value ok. So, therefore I will be I, I, I shall be interested in computing this value right S j XOR with C i S j minus 1 sigma where i runs from 1 to L right. I need to ensure that this is actually equal to 0 for j running from L to n for all the values right. So, you note that I can now write this as two separate parts ok, because, because I mean I mean if you remember I mean if I if I if I write this I mean the corresponding coefficient c i that is these coefficients I can write as an XOR of this XOR with this. Okay. So, therefore, this gives you the first part okay, and this gives you the second part. Okay. So, therefore, if I am interested in computing S j XOR with C i S j minus i where i runs from say 1 to L, okay, then this will be equal to S j XOR with sigma C i n s j minus i ok. This is one part and the other part will be will be the corresponding part from s j minus n plus m ok plus the other part of the sigma. So, what is the other part of the sigma? So, why so you I, I hope you have understood why I am writing j minus n plus m because th at this point I am in I am writing out the corresponding coefficient for c n minus m. Okay. So, C n minus m is this okay. and the corresponding seed value for this will be j minus n plus j minus I mean j minus n minus m right. So, that is exactly this value ok. So, so therefore, the rest part of the sigma comes in you have got C i m ok and S j minus n plus m minus i comes in after that. <coughs> And you note that this i will run from 1 to L m s and this will run from 1 to L m s. Okay. So, you note that for all the previous values that is for j running from L to n minus 1, this value will be 0 because you know that this LFSR was properly generating all these values. Okay. But what about this? So, you see that the suffix here is j minus n plus m. Okay. So, when your j runs from L to n minus 1, okay, j runs from L to n minus 1. So, you see that if you substitute here n, n minus 1, then you get n minus 1, uh, n minus 1 minus n plus m. So, that is m minus 1. Okay. So, therefore, this sequence is actually generating the first m minus first m 
digits of the sequence okay of its corresponding lfsr so therefore this was actually properly generating so therefore this value is also a zero value so this is a zero and this is a zero so you get zero for j running from l to n minus 1 okay and what about when j equal to n this will generate a 1 because of the discrepancy and this will also generate a 1 because of the discrepancy and both the discrepancies will get cancelled out okay and therefore you see that this corresponding i mean therefore we say that the corresponding coefficient cd actually generates the entire sequence sn plus 1 okay so this is not so a trivial proof so therefore please go back and look at the proof again and try to work with some small examples okay so the conclusions are that the lfsr with length l and connection polynomial cd generates the sequence s0 to sn and since l satisfies lemma 1 with equality the induction also gets proved okay so you saw that l was actually equal to lns comma the maximum of lns comma n plus 1 minus lns okay so therefore you are proving the equality also for ln plus 1s okay so so i am not going into the i mean details of the algorithm which you can follow from this discussion okay you must note one thing that what you are doing is that you are maintaining some temporary variables like uh, bd and m and things like that m i have already defined so bd is another temporary variable and td is another temporary variable and you note that whenever there is a d equal to 1 so you are calculating the discrepancy whenever this d is equal to 1 then you are doing certain operations okay and when do you require to modify the length when l is less than equal to n by 2 i described to you why it so and only at that particular time you require to update the value of l otherwise the l is fine okay so you can work through the details of this thing but i'll give you some examples but i i'll tell you one thing that until unless you work with your hand you will not be so clear okay so therefore please go back and work with some toy examples okay so consider the sequence of periodicity 20 so therefore this is for example a sequence you can actually plot the variation of the linear complexity with n by calculating this using the baldekam massey algorithm okay and this is actually called the linear profile so you can actually plot them and it will look like this okay so you see that if this is the line corresponding to l equal to n by 2 then whenever l is less than equal to n by 2 the modification has taken place otherwise when l is actually greater than equal greater than n by 2 the modification is of l is not required you get the step function at those places okay so you can little bit look it more closely to obtain certain interesting properties but i will conclude with the example with which i started so therefore this is the sequence right yesterday we saw that a four step lfsr was unable to generate this sequence so in order to do obtain the solve the problem let us apply the baldekam massey algorithm okay so in order to do that we will store this, that in the form of a table like this so you see that sn d td cd l m bd and n are some variables that is there and we will start populating this table okay so this is the sequence which you wish to generate from 0011101 okay so you start with a value of cd equal to 1 that was my convention and your l value was 0 okay and bd i mean m is actually in this case you start with initialize with minus 1 and bd is the corresponding polynomial which generates this sequence okay so this was my cmd in my discussion okay in the analysis so n is equal to 0 means till now you have generated till 0 okay that is you have generated nothing until this point okay this is just a initialization of the algorithm okay so what you do next is that you get zero you know that what is the discrepancy it is zero right so therefore you don't require to do any other thing so therefore you see that the, all the things are kept intact okay next what you get is again a zero again you have a discrepancy of zero and therefore you don't do anything but the next thing you get a one is a one right the moment you get a one your discrepancy is equal to one because you feeding back zero and you are getting and you want one right so therefore the xor is 1 so therefore you know that you require to update the corresponding value of cd right so you see that what you do is that you xor the previous value of cd that is 1 with the corresponding value of bd but you multiply that with d to the power of n minus m okay so what is your n here 2 and your m value is minus 1 so 2 minus minus 1 is 2 plus 1 3 so you get 
1 plus d cube. So, you see that 1 plus d cube which has a length of 3 should be able to generate this particular sequence 0 0 1 and this we have already seen right with our hand ex hand uh, exercise right. So, therefore, what is the value of m equal to 2? So, m is the previous sequence before the length got changed. So, the length got changed here from 0 to 3 and what you have generated previously was till 2 right. So, therefore, m is actually equal to the previous value. So, therefore, in this case it is 2 and the corresponding polynomial was 1 and now you have generated till 3 that is the I mean 0 1 2 3 right. So, the next thing which you get is 1 and you again find that you have a discrepancy here which means that you need to change the value of 1 plus d plus I mean you need to change the value of c d ok. So, what you do is that you take n and you see that this is m. So, therefore, 3 minus 2 is 1. So, you multiply this with so, therefore, you take 1 plus d cube and you also exhort the previous value of b d, but multiplying that with d. So, therefore, you get 1 plus d plus d cube right. So, you get 1 plus d plus d cube and your length. So, you, are, you see that you are not updating the length. Can you tell me why? Yeah, because of that inequality right. So, therefore, in this case you do not require to update this value ok and therefore, you go ahead with this. So, you have generated till this point. So, therefore, you see that it works fine here for these things because it generates <coughs> the discrepancy of 0. So, therefore, there is no other updating required for these, these stages, but at this point we were unable to construct with a 3 bit LFSR ok and you see that the discrepancy is in this case 1. Why? Now, because 1 plus d cube. So, if you exhort the previous this value and this value that is the previous sequence values you get 1 and 1 exhort you are actually feeding back 0, but what you want is a 1 ok. So, what is the dis discrepancy value? It is equal to 1 right. So, therefore, you need to modify the value of C d. So, therefore, you take 1 plus d plus d cube and exhort that with the previous value of B d ok. So, uh, ok. So, you get to uh, so, therefore, what is the previous value of B d? It is equal to 1 multiplied with d to the power of 7 minus 2. So, that is d to the power of 5. So, you take 1 plus d plus d cube plus d to the power of 5 and you get L equal to 5. So, you have you see that you have modified the length ag again because 3 is actually smaller than 7 by 2 ok. So, therefore, you have modified the value of this to 5 and therefore, you see that a 5 stage LFSR with this particular polynomial is able to generate the entire sequence ok. So, therefore, you see that using Berlake and Massey algorithm you are able to calculate the corresponding minimal length of the LFSR which will generate the sequence and also find out the corresponding polynomial ok. And actually you can you see from the algorithm statement the complexity of this algorithm is O n square ok. So, therefore, this is a quadratic algorithm to generate the corresponding sequence ok. So, this is quite efficient in that case. So, the references that I have followed are as follows. So, these are standard references, but I will suggest you to go back and read this paper. It is freely downloadable. It is called shift register synthesis and BCH decoding. Just concentrate on the first part of this paper ok. This gives you a description, but this actually talks in prime fields and I have generalized this proof for GF 2 ok. I mean not generalized, made it more specific actually ok. So, so, this is a classic paper, uh, it is ITB transaction and information theory paper, but you understand. So, what, what we have learned from this example is that a single LFSR system is not good right. If you have a single LFSR based stream cipher, then you can actually do a known plain text attack, you can obtain the key stream and from there you can actually reconstruct the LFSR, you can know everything about the LFSR ok. So, given 2 n bit sequence you can construct the entire thing right. So, therefore, you need a multi LFSR system ok. So, therefore, in the future classes, next day classes we will concentrate, we will still continue with stream ciphers and we will try to understand more detailed I mean better, better constructions of stream ciphers using LFSRs and also not LFSRs.